at the top of my list when I sit down to write anything is the word adventure. A pantomime has to be an adventure. No matter what comic uh, routines are in it, no matter what love songs are in it, it's got to have at least 60% where the kids are holding onto the seat in front of them going, oh, what's that? What's that? oh, that's all right, it's worked out. Oh, no, 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 this is totally, you know, they've, they've got to feel involved in the story. I'm here to help Cinder see all will be well. As soon as we've got a cast in place, I start writing. So it really can begin February, March time, given that I, I currently write 10 pantomime scripts a year. Some of the stars that we've had, the Hoff, who would have thought he would ever do Panto? Dame Edna, Sam Atwater, Gareth Gates, Suzanne Shaw from Hearsay, Jenny Eclair, Louis Spence. It's a bizarre old okay. game. The big new uh, sort of Panto virgin, I suppose, is Linda Gray, uh, ex of Dallas. I'm playing the Fairy Godmother. Well, what could be better? What could be better? Oh, to go from Sue Ellen Ewing to the Fairy Godmother. Of course, it's sometimes it might, Sue Ellen might creep in, you know. She just wants center stage at all times, so I have to keep her at bay. So I've tried to sort of pepper the script with little Dallas references. Can you heal my finger as well? I, I shut it in the cellar door. Look, it's swelling up. It's swelling up. It's swelling up. Obviously, she's going to have an American accent, so we can build on that as well. Fairy Godmother with an American accent. Buttons. Be a dear. Find a pumpkin and some mice to make a oh cook. How did I? Oh, we have to do it again in front of the writer. Gosh. Okay. No, the stuff I need just isn't here. I know buttons. Be a dear. Find a pumpkin and some mice to make a coach and horses. Nice. Very good. <laughs> it's great having someone like Linda to write for because there's lots of opportunity to just do that wink to the audience. You know that I know that you know that I used to be a. <laughs> a vodka driven nasty old sow in Dallas. But well, here I am playing Fairy Godmother in Panto. It's great. It's, oh, Eric Potts wrote yeah, this and it was like, right, so your eyes roll and you go, yeah, how many? You know, probably 12 people wrote this. <laughs> you know, they call, they call this sort of uh, conglomerate to Eric Potts. Yeah. But I'm so thrilled to know that you pull. How, you, how do you write the script? I mean, where does how's that come, where does it come from? Well, the, the story of Cinders will always be the story of Cinders. Right. So that's your basis, obviously. Then we take our, our casting, you write specifically for the castings. Well, it wasn't a dream after all. <laughs> Hello, Wimbledon. I think it's important to give each venue their own show rather than think, oh, this is a production that was in Sunderland last year and it's just been dumped here and quite frankly, it could go anywhere. Television references always get a good response. It's me. If this doesn't get me a part in Downton, I don't know what will. To develop it into a, a, a readable, doable, workable, magical script is extraordinary. Oh, and I'm serious. Thanks. I think Panto has built up such a tradition in, in Britain um, that parents now take their children to Panto, hoping the children have the same experiences that they had 25, 30 years earlier. And that is, is what I think maintains the, the, the viability of Panto and the popularity of Panto. They've tried it elsewhere in America, but it just, it just doesn't latch on because people don't know the traditions. And that, I think, is what keeps Panto alive. The Fairy Godmother wishes all of you a beautiful holiday, have a Merry Christmas, and a lovely New Year. <laughs>